Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh, Professor of Biochemistry and in this video we will discuss how the digested proteins forming amino acids and formed amino acids how they will be absorbing from the intestine okay and what are all the process involved in absorption of amino acids right this is a continuation of our previous video digestion of proteins so as the digestion part completed in the intestine so they do existence of free amino acids and these free amino acids has to be taken up by the intestinal cells right and which is an energy requiring process and there is a five transport systems available which to absorb these formed the amino acids from the digestion part right and there is existence of one more cycle gamma glutamyl cycle for take up of this uh, or transport of uh, free amino acids from outside of intestinal cells to inside of intestinal cells the absorption of amino acids mainly occurring in small intestine which is as i mentioned beginning in the beginning it is an energy requiring process and the transport systems are carrier mediated okay something has to be carry these amino acids they as such they themselves cannot be absorbed into the intestinal cells or they are energy dependent as i mentioned atp sodium dependent import system so that means if sodium is going inside like if this is a intestinal cell okay so there is a symporter so one way sodium is going inside so along with sodium amino acid has to be go along with the sodium so this is called symport mechanism so there are five different transport mechanisms or five different carriers for different amino acids because there are 20 amino acids do exist as i told you 10 will be synthesizing in the body coming from the diet right so it's not necessary that all the 10 amino acids has to be synthesized okay they also may present in the diet right there are five different carriers first carrier is for neutral amino acids such as alanine alanine valine leucine methionine phenylalanine tyrosine isoleucine and for basic amino acids like lysine arginine and cysteine one more uh, transport system and for amino acids like proline and glycine there is another transport system for acidic amino acids like aspartic acid glutamic acid there is a separate uh, transport system and for beta amino acids like beta alanine there is another set of transport mechanism available for their absorption so intestines and kidney tubules so what i said intestine is a one organ where amino acid digested part of proteins forming amino acids and these amino acids will be absorbed but other organ kidney what is the function of kidney kidney is a organ which eliminates the waste products okay so this function alone will not make kidney unique organ okay so along with the elimination it has to know the difference between waste product and useful product so amino acids are useful to us so it shouldn't allow these amino acids to be excreted so it has to take up that means reabsorb the useful substances such as amino acids from the circulation okay so for that there is a transport mechanism available for neutral amino acids especially okay that is by gamma glutamyl cycle or mister cycle okay so here for this uh, mister cycle the main tripeptide that is glutathione okay gamma glutamyl cysteinyl glycine the chemical name of glutathione is gamma glutamyl cysteinyl glycine it is a tripeptide why tripeptide you see the name chemical name gamma glutamyl cysteinyl glycine glutamic acid is there glycine is there cysteine is there so all are in linkage and sh so glutathione always represents tsh so sh represents sulfhydryl group and sulfhydryl group uh, free sulfhydryl group present in cysteine okay indirectly indicates the presence of cysteine in the glutathione okay so that means already this glutathione is having three amino acids okay this glutathione is helpful in mister cycle so what happens in mister cycle once this glutathione enters inside the cells it will be broken down to free amino acids and the net result is transfer of amino acid across the membrane next in diagrammatic representation here you can see here this is a cell outside and this is cell inside okay so what happen when glutathione enters here okay because of the enzyme i mean like uh, or the transport not enzyme it is a transport transporter uh, mechanism gamma glutamyl transferase okay so here what is happening here when amino acid is coming from outside to inside this glutathione will take up the amino acid okay when amino acid is coming from outside to inside the renal tubule cells okay it will take up that amino acid this glutathione once it take up the amino acid it will be converted into cysteinyl glycine and glutamyl amino acid that means cysteinyl glycine will be separated and glutamyl amino acids will be separated and the cysteinyl glycine will be splitted to glycine and cysteine okay i'll tell you what is the fate of this cysteine and glycine and now this glutamyl amino acid will be again what it will do it will be take off its amino acid whatever it is accepted okay 
Now this glutamyl will be converted to oxyproline uh, by the enzyme oxyproline is to glutamate and this glutamate again convert accepting the cysteine to form glutamyl cysteine. So here amino acid, amino acid taken up by glutathione and this glutathione splitted into two parts. So as I told you glutathione is containing three amino acids one amino acid will be out of the glutathione to form glutamyl amino acid and rest is cysteinyl glycine so this cysteinyl glycine again splitted into cysteine plus glycine now this glutamyl amino acid what happened it will remove its amino acid and it can be converted into glutamate So by the enzyme oxyprolinase, the enzyme remember this is the main enzyme required okay oxyprolinase it is an energy dependent ATP is required okay. So this glutamate again takes up this cysteine to form glutamyl cysteine and again this glutamyl cysteine takes up the glycine to form glutathione by glutathione synthase again here there is a involvement of ATP. So total of three ATPs are required here okay one conversion of glutamyl amino acid to glutamate there is a requirement of 1 ATP and glutamate to glutamyl cysteine it is also energy dependent ATP is required and again glutamyl cysteine to glutathione formation there is one more ATP so total for Mr. cycle to happen 3 ATP is required okay one so that's what amino acid transportation across the membrane is energy dependent once amino acid is coming inside it required 3 amino acids if glutathione is involved especially in renal or renal tubular cells so dipeptides and tripeptides can enter the breast border of mucosal cells they are immediately hydrolyzed into single amino acids because these dipeptides and then tripeptides are present on the intestinal mucosal cells or breast borders of intestinal mucosal cells so once the moment these dipeptides are coming simultaneously broke down formation of amino acid they can be easily transported across the membrane into the intestinal cells so then they will be directly transported into portal vein they are immunogenic causing antibody reaction leading to food allergy so that's what sometimes what happened see these uh, dipeptides and tripeptides they will escape the digestion directly entering into portal vein so that's the reason people who are uh, they are allergic to peanuts so what happened this is a proteins present in the peanut so they cannot be completely digested so these dipeptides and tripeptides they easily enter into the portal vein they causes uh, itching and allergy reactions because they are immunogenic causing antibody reactions so now we'll discuss the deficiencies related to the absorption of amino acids so the main thing is the deficiency of enzyme 5 oxyprolinase leads to oxyprolinuria okay so what happens here oxyprolinase is an enzyme which is involved in converting glutamyl amino acid into glutamate so because of the deficiency of this oxyprolinase there is a what happened glutamyl amino acid will be there and this glutamyl amino acid will be excreting in the urine causing oxyprolonuria and allergy to certain food proteins like milk fish is believed to result absorption of partially digested proteins okay which escaping the brush borders of intestinal cells and directly entering into portal vein and defects in intestinal amino acid transport systems are seen in inborn errors of metabolism such as Hartnup's disease where in Hartnup's disease the transport mechanisms which are not available especially for aromatic amino acid tryptophan okay Hartnup's disease is because of inability in absorption of aromatic amino acid tryptophan and immunoglycuria and same way the mechanism or the carrier which is defect in transportation of glycine so glycine will be excreted and cystinuria so this is the one you have to remember so if uh, cystinuria if cystine is going along with it so you have to remember this code word cold so ornithine arginine lysine so these all four amino acids have a same transport mechanism for the absorption so if this mechanism or the transporter is absent in renal tubules cysteine not only cysteine excretes it will carry it will take up ornithine it will take up arginine it will take up lysine also so coal coal is a code word okay where in case of cystinuria the other amino acids also excrete in the urine so what are the reasons for inability in absorption so partial gastrectomy pancreatitis carcinoma of pancreas and cystic fibrosis may affect the digestion absorption of proteins protein losing enteropathy there is an excessive loss of proteins through gastrointestinal tract so these are all the defects related with the absorption of proteins reabsorption as well next all proteins in the body are so that's all about the absorption part of uh, digested amino acid and the uh, related disorders thanks for watching thank you